So then we are back with the modern understandings from the time of the second tabernacle services where we find the Aramaic English translation of the word. This translation comes from the original manuscripts of the prophets of the Tzayelic lineage. So then we can understand the time of the end as per Yeshayahu the prophet. We find layers of understanding of the spring feast, the autumn feast and also the returning of the cities of the Mashiach laid waste for many centuries. As we read it in Yeshayahu the prophet, let's then make an analysis first if we believe truly that the divine never changes and whatsoever holy words he spoke obviously remains intact. So then, if we understand this principle, then we can continue with the holy instructions because then they bear truth themselves. But let's then, firstly, analyze what's going on as far as, as the layers of trade. As we understand, Daniel, he was obviously a prophet. But truly he was not a prophet related mostly with tabernacling. He was a prophet sent in order to explain the kingdoms of the Gentiles until the time of the end. So then, understandably, the whole instructions given, Daniel was aware of it, because 70 years after the captivity of the nation, then Daniel himself had mentioned and he saw that these holy instructions then were obviously coming to its completion. And then he verified in the words of Yirmiyahu, that the prophecy was ending the 70 years of captivity. So then, obviously, reading from the Holy Instructions, there is a layer precisely related with Gentiles. The Gentiles you can read in Daniel, and you can understand in Daniel 11, the reflected prophecies of the previous set of prophecies so then at the midpoint from a thousand years of the Mashiach versus a thousand years of Nahashatan you find then exactly in the center from a thousand and a thousand then you begin to make a reference of then the trade how was back then, how is today, and also the 23rd chapter of Yerushayahu, you find then the restoration of the trade as it was taught by Abraham. It's kind of a strange speaking of Abraham, the teacher of trade, because truly Abraham, he obviously had a couple of sons, and then the first was Yishmael, and the second was obviously the Itzak, the starting of tabernacling later on. So then Abraham, when he was then coming back from the fight with the kings, we find then Abraham teaching his child, teaching his son. Contrary to what so many people think, there was a feud a long time ago from the first son and the second son. So what must take place is the understanding of the character of the divine. The divine, because this child had 50% of the anointing, we have to understand what is the role of Ishmael and the role of Yitzhak. Trade back then before Abraham obviously wasn't done the way the divine wanted. People were cheating, people were lying, people were deceiving, doing trade. This was a very popular situation back then and quite frankly today you know the situation is not improved ever since 
you know people lie people cheat people do many kinds of fraud they falsify documents it was amazing because if you start researching precisely you find you know thousands upon thousands of fraud so then when Abraham had the first son then Abraham taught him the intricacies of trade but doing in a way that reflects the divine in whatever category you may think of amazingly then later on when the nation started being included with the trade of the world they were doing in a such a way reflecting the divine you know be truthful to the word giving credit and receiving being truthful when you do trade scales that are absolutely properly set for trade and Abraham taught his first son obviously and the first son obviously then came the Arab nations the descendants of Ishmael so then when we understand what's going on in the world today via then Daniel the prophet you find Daniel explaining sections of the time of the end in the economy being restored as per the standards that Abraham taught his first son now since these teachings are not tabernacle related you don't find a lot of it so the situation of the first son and then the tent of Abraham and then Sarah and then Hagar fighting against each other and there was no reason for it similarly the situation for instance when you find then the wife of Lot turning into a column of salt so there are some flaws that can be filtered because of the character of the divine there are a couple of situations there is the writing and the action the writing the proper way of writing gives you an understanding now if you have a dirty actions it simply destroys what you have learned as far as, as the scripture because the lifestyle is as important as learning the Torah now if you learn the Torah and your lifestyle is dirty then you won't be able to teach other people so then Daniel the prophet explains that there is a system that's going to be weakened and then later on you find that Daniel is explaining then that these system in this nation is going to come out of this particular layer wealthy so then speaking of trade and not speaking of tabernacling there is a portion that Daniel explains at the kingdom of the south and explains also and that's obvious you find in the kingdom of the south then in Africa related with the prophecies that are reflected from the first because the geographical area changes you find for instance Gog, Magog, you find those places that already have taken place some of those conflicts but then you have to reflect these for the time of the end so in fact what you are reading has taken place twice one of them already taking place and then they're reflected in the future that's why then you read the kingdom of the east that already has taken place when you read Daniel and then explains the autumn feast when the situation 
is already taking place but then you understand the future then the kingdom of the east coming and then marching up in the river Euphrates so the understanding obviously has taken place and then takes place again in the future so each prophecy related with Yom Kippur or then the autumn feast has a reflection previously when you read the prophets so then this system that was then weakened and it's going to recuperate is related with the trade in the southern kingdom it has nothing to do with Yehuda because the content of the understanding is and then the violent ones beyond the rivers of Ethiopia this truly is the focus now if you read the prophecy the layer related with it and you find Yehuda up north then you don't understand geography because you are not talking about the prophecy that already had taken place but Yom Kippur during the time of the restoration and then the time of the end so then Asia for instance our president is in Asia doing his visit and so on and so forth and try to make ties with Asia but the point is not making ties with Asia they already are dominant the Asian market is already dominant so there is nothing to bargain with there are only some military skirmishes going on in certain areas near China and these won't bring us much economy out of it but the kingdom of the south related with the violent ones beyond the rivers of Ethiopia that's south and what is in the economy at the moment that requires organization related with the place beyond the rivers of Ethiopia now if you are a person that you want every situation explained on instructions then you are not wise because some of these are discerned Daniel when he wrote the prophecy of the kingdom of the east at the time of the restoration in the time of the end it doesn't say China does it But it does explain the kingdom of the East, the most prominent, powerful nation of the kingdom of the East, then coming from the East. Now the situation with beyond the rivers of Ethiopia is Congo in Africa because of the rare materials. So what is the objective? What is the president doing in Asia? should be making deals in Africa he's going to Asia to try to make ties with the economy that won't improve because Asia already dominates the market and we can produce our labor our factories are very expensive so there are some redundancies with what the people are doing and the way they think if any the way they read the scripture then you find US government involved in a mountain city in Mountain View Arkansas thinking that it would become a holy city of their own so you know the Greco-Roman translation is very deceiving so US is not on the proper path at the moment what should be taking place is then making deals with the nations of Africa principally starting in Congo organizing Congo and organizing the mines and using our money as a means of international exchange then we can organize the rare materials industry 
after these is taken care of, then we can make a deal with Asia. Now the president goes there, the economy is ruined, we are barely producing, and try to strengthen the ties of, in what sense, is not economical for sure. Then wasting time with the military skirmishes at sea or in the air. These won't help our economy to produce. So then, Daniel explains very clearly that the reason why then this weakened system becomes stronger is because it's related with the area beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Now, tabernacling, as we understand, is related with Ethiopia, not south of beyond the rivers. So the understanding is organizing Congo, organizing the area south of it then it strengthens the weakened system. Afterwards, then, they can level the situation, but not until. So what the U.S. is doing in Asia at the moment, there is absolutely no influence. It's simply a waste of money, a waste of time. Ezekiel, however, speaks of tabernacling. It's another layer that we can talk next time. Because what are priorities are priorities. Now, if you do a bit of a research, you'll find in this Mountain View, Arkansas, it's got a mountain there with 12 gates. So not sure what U.S. had in mind uh, many years ago, but they thought they were building a holy city of their own. How warped is this Greco-Roman translation? So then, as far as says Daniel, later that there are many links related then with Gala or Revelation. And then leading towards the Yom Kippur, or then the time of the autumn feast. So please stay tuned, much more coming up.